Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're going to use the adjusted R squared, R squared, and the mean square error to compare candidate models to see which one is best. <clears throat> so the setting is there's some true model out there and we'd love to find it but we don't know what it is. Now we pick a candidate model to try to find the best model. So notice the Y's are the same. So the Y's are generated from the true model. It's just the predictor variables or regression variables that we don't know what they are 100%. <clears throat> so the criteria for comparing models, we're going to look at these three. Uh, first is R squared, and it's the explained variability by the regression model. So sum of squares regression over sum of squares total. And then we've shown that it can be thought of as 1 minus sum of squares residual over total. Um, we've shown that it always increases when each variable is added to the model. But we, uh, you know, to examine R squared, you really need to find substantial changes when variables are added or removed. So when you're comparing models and you're using R squared, you want significant changes because it'll always change at least by a little bit. Now, notice this uh, formula here. 1 minus sum of squares residual over sum of squares total. Now, the 1 is a constant, of course, and the Y data doesn't change. So when we use different number of predictive variables, the Ys don't change. So this sum of squares total doesn't change. So the only thing that changes is this sum of squares residual. And so um, so the only non-constant is the sum of squares residual and choosing a model based upon R squared is actually equivalent to using sum of squares residual and just finding the smallest. So if you can find the model with the smallest sum of squares residual, then you found the maximum um, R squared value. Now the next uh, statistic we use is often the mean square error. Sometimes you just generically call it S squared. And it's the sum of squares residual over n minus k plus 1. This is the unbiased estimate for the mean square error. And so what this estimates, or at least we're trying to, is this, the sigma squared, the, the variability in the residual, or the error. Now, notice, um, and more on PV24, but if we were to, to take the expected value of S squared, and, and it's easiest to multiply it by this constant because then you can divide it by it later and um, so we look at the sum of squares residual the expected value of it and we've shown that in quadratic form it's this and then we've also you know I have a video on expected mean of a quadratic form and it's the trace of that matrix here times the true variance of y plus the true mean of y times that matrix times the true mean. Okay, so this is background. But note that I minus H is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement space of the col you know of the column space of X. And I have videos on perpendicular projection matrices. I have a couple in this series in playlist and I also have a couple in the matrix playlist that I have on perpendicular projection matrices. But notice that if we're overfitting the model, meaning we have more variables in the model than the true model itself, then this is this is zero. And which which implies that our estimate, our S squared, is an unbiased estimate of, of uh, sig, you know the error variance. And and the reason is that this is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of X. So any vector that's in the column space of X and then pre-multiplied by 1 minus H goes to 0. Now if it's any other vector, then it's projected onto the orthogonal complement. So it, it's uh, perpendicular to it. But since we've overfitted, this is in the column space, so that has to be 0. And actually, that's the reason. So a lot of these fitting or criteria, diagnostics, model, you know, diagnostics, they say 
to, you know, we need to estimate that air variance, you know, come up with an S squared. And almost all of them say, you know, use the mean square error from the largest model fit. And that, and this is the reason, because it produces an unbiased estimate. Now the variance associated with it might be a little bit large, but we know it's unbiased. Now, if we underfit the model, meaning we don't quite have enough predictors, then this is positive, right? This is not, X0 is not in the calm space. So it's a, some vector dangling out there in space. And then when we, uh, this, this produces something positive. And actually any idempotent matrix, which this is, is uh, non-negative definite. So basically what it's saying is the, the expected value of the mean square error is, is biased upwards. So if choosing a model based on the smallest mean square error may lead to overfitting. Right, because if you underfit, then that mean square error tends to be larger, right? Because it's bi biased upward. Now, the adjusted R squared um, is another measure we can use to compare models, but I want to give a little background first. R squared, we said, was this one minus sum of squares residual or sum of squares total. Now, if we multiply this piece times one, it doesn't change it, right? So let's multiply it by n over n. Right, so then the sum of squares residual divided by n, the sample size, sum of squares total divided by n, these are sample estimates of the air variance and the response variance. Okay, so s, you know, sigma squared hat and sigma y squared hat are sample estimates of the residual air, right. They're biased, right? Because remember, if we divide it by n minus k plus 1, then that becomes unbiased. And if we divide this by n minus 1, it's unbiased. So these are biased estimates of the residual error and the response variable y, the variances of them. Um, note that they're biased. So what the adjusted R squared does, instead of using biased estimates for these variances, they use unbiased estimates. So this is sum of squares residual divided by n minus k plus 1, and the sum of squares total divided by n minus 1. Each of these are unbiased for their respective variances that they're trying to estimate. So the biased estimates are replaced with the unbiased estimates. But when you look at this, when I look at this, what's non-constant? So 1 is constant. Sample size is constant, right? We're using the same sample size for all our models. Sum of squares total is constant. N is constant. K is not, because that K plus 1 is the number of regression variables. Sum of squares residual is not. So really, the only non-constant is the sum of squares divided by N minus K plus 1. Right? So the only non-constant is the mean square error. So choosing a final model based upon um, the adjusted R squared is actually equivalent to minimizing the mean square, which is case two that we just discussed. Well, in my opinion, these statistics unquestionably should be used, but not solely used to determine the best model. These uh, variables are helpful, but there are other variables like the AIC and the, and the Malo CP and other statistics that can be used to find the best model. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.